It was truly an insightful and inspiring conversation with Dr. Sangeeta Reddy. We discussed a range of topics from business to life and purpose. As she says, a lot is preordained and she is lucky to be in a position to truly make a difference for society at large and that's the very purpose for her at Apollo Hospitals which continues to drive her. Indian middle class is what inspires her. Their grit, determination for a better life and ability to sacrifice for growth and betterment of their families and society is unsurpassed. Apollo Hospitals and her family is what inspires her and keeps her energized and is the driver of her success. Welcome to the second episode of Duologues. Our guest today is truly an inspiring figure, not just for me, but for many others out there. She is Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, Joint Managing Director of Apollo Hospitals, Asia's largest healthcare group, immediate past president of FIKI, and erstwhile member of World Economic Forum. Dr. Reddy, thank you so much for agreeing to do the second edition of Duologues with me. I'm extremely thankful to you. And starting the conversation, essentially, this is going to revolve around three aspects of your life. The first part would be around work, uh, your life at your professional environment. The second part of the conversation will be around very life and some of the experiences if you can share with people to create benchmarks, to create insights, which will help them learn out of your life, the kind of opportunities and challenges you faced. And the third part of the conversation will be around the very purpose which drives you to do what you do in your life. Mm -hmm. To begin with, I think uh, I have seen you, especially over last one year, wearing multiple hats. I mm -hmm. do remember the executive committee meeting of FIKI when you took over as the president. And soon thereafter, we had this huge global crisis of COVID hitting the world. And then subsequently, uh, at least I know that there were two major responsibilities which you were leading from the front. One for the industry, how do we look at getting back on reviving the economy? And the second is for the very fact that you're leading Apollo Hospitals. How do we look at the entire healthcare industry to be taking up this particular challenge? So first, Manish, thank you for inviting me. And it's a pleasure to, to talk to you and share some of these uh, thoughts. And I believe that leadership must step up the most during a crisis. And what they need to do is a combination of fact-based communication, uh, appreciation of what the other person is going through. Uh, and you know, the fear, the uncertainty, the disruption of business, and their on the ground problems. So when we began to discuss from the membership perspective, I think we got a response which has been overwhelming. So if I look back on the year 2020, I will first say that for the world, it's like, you know, sometimes these large events define uh, the entire era or the decade. Uh, 2020 is going to be, you know, kind of a cutoff point and world will refer to pre-COVID and post-COVID. It's, it's, you know, that's, that's how large and scary and, you know, transformational this has been. And uh, if I reflect on, you know, some of the things during the FIKI period, it's really about um, engage, try to think win-win for both sides. It's easy to ask, you know, the government for X, Y, Z, but what is the fiscal deficit? Absolutely. What can they afford? How do we do? So, you know, I'm really happy to say that in multiple counts, we were able to communicate from that sense of mutual purpose. And because of that, I believe we got good response, we got creative support. And to our membership, whether we did, we did uh, you know, a very simple basic idea, which is a call center to help them understand the medical aspect, understand the disruption to business, and help them in supply chain. So if a truck was stuck at some state border, that state team would call up chief minister's office, chief secretary, help you know, one of our, our members uh, goods move through a border. So it was kind of an engagement at a very different level and I think it got us a goodwill which has been quite phenomenal at a point when people felt our membership would degrow. 
because people wouldn't want to pay the membership fee. Absolutely. We actually grew membership over 17%. Fantastic. But also on the Apollo side, and that's what made the year, I think, you know, tremendous in terms of intellectually, emotionally and physically, you know, taxing was the fact that, you know, people looked up to us to say, what is Apollo going to say? What are we going to do? Hmm. Uh, the first reaction was, this is very contagious. We have to protect our own patients. Hmm. So we said, and of course, we have to treat because, you know, if, if our people get sick, we, they hmm. will look to us. So isolation, care protocols, uh, global information, because India was a little lucky in that we got a little Absolutely. later than the others. And we realized the importance of communication, of leadership, of messaging, uh, and of reassuring, but most importantly, the importance of the frontline worker. Absolutely. I mean, if you see a nurse, small, you know, this thing, she's earning 20,000 rupees and she's risking her life Excellent. to do that. I think there can be no inspiration beyond that. And, and I really want to commend uh, the Prime Minister and everybody yes. who has recognized healthcare workers for what they have done and what they have been, Absolutely. which is truly heroic in this period. Absolutely. So it has been an effort almost at the level of managing a war. When you look at the macro aspects of the healthcare sector itself and also at Apollo hospitals, how do you see the time ahead and how are you looking at initiatives to create sustainability at Apollo hospitals? Our chairman, Dr. Reddy, uh, returned from the US in 1970, a time when most people were going, exactly he going, came yeah. back. But he's a cardiologist and um, one day he saved a young man, about 38 years old, from his first heart attack, it referred him to Dr. Denton Cooley for a bypass because at that time India didn't have a credible heart surgery program. And unfortunately, before he could raise the money and get his visa, he had a second attack and succumbed. And that day he said this should not happen anymore. Uh, looking at the wife and young children he left behind, he said Indian doctors are curing and caring for people all over the world. Let's give them the infrastructure to do so within our own country. And it was there, born from the need of our people, that the birth of Apollo happened. And, uh, and he said in the very beginning, we will bring world-class healthcare within the reach of people. And we will be committed to excellence in clinical care, in education and in research. And so he gave us these three pillars. And today, the entire Apollo, over 100,000 people, uh, just echo and are inspired by this ideology, which has remained the guiding light for us over the last 38 years since we began our journey. And so I think so much is about purpose, passion, and of course, method. If you can sort of share your journey with the viewers and sort of reflect some of the aspects which were kind of challenges or possibly uh, learnings for you, when sort of I do understand that you were initially in your younger age raised in the US, you came back to the country and then you did your post-graduation again in US. You also worked in one of the hospitals in New, New York, I understand, and which which again provided some initial learnings for you, which really came handy in the later part of your professional career. So if you can reflect upon some of the aspects of your life, which can become inspiration to a lot of people. So I think, um, you know, many people talk about charting a course, having a path, etc. So much of, of what happens is, is fate or destiny. And how you, you do it is, is really to... Uh, you know, to just try and live each day to the fullest first. Um, but I think so many, like I wanted to be a doctor myself. I, I went to this really very focused school, uh, which, which helps. I got a, a merit seat in medicine and my father didn't want me to. And yeah. he said, you know, you, you will take all your patients home, uh, mentally at least, so you won't be able to lead uh, this thing. So, so do something else, but that, you know, Today, I'm able to, to work with Absolutely. and to help so many doctors. So, so that was something which was preordained. Um, and so at the, that point of time, you may not see it. Yeah. But the ability, and, and truly, I didn't. I, I didn't speak to dad for a month. <laughs> but uh, uh, the ability to kind of say, let me do the best I can. Uh, let me make it about everyone else and not just me. Those two mindsets, I think, uh, enable a certain path to evolve. And I must confess, I, I'm, I've been very lucky. 
uh, whether it's in terms of my parents, both on the professional side and my mother on the value system, my sisters who each are immensely talented and so we have this uh, ability to inspire and support each other as well as you know collaborate and compete. So it's, it's, an, it's an amazing ecosystem to, to have immediately around you. And then of course the, the Apollo family. Doctors who you know I've seen, they would uh, spare nothing in the pursuit of giving their patient the best. And um, I, I hope that I'm able to live up to, to help others because I was blessed in a certain Appreciate way. It. So that's... Excellent. Thank you. And uh, I for the fact know that how inspired you are uh, from your father and a lot of people like me too are. Who are the people you look up to in your life and possibly what is the reason uh, for you to be able to look up to them? You know, all the typical role models, I've, I've um, Einstein, I, I love invention, science. So yeah. Einstein, Jonathan Nash, that ability to, you know, on the surface of it, you may not understand, but there is so much that they can give the world. Uh, Mother Teresa, selflessness, my father, my mother, uh, amazing Gandhiji, a paradigm shift in the way you achieve something, Absolutely. you know, lessons for the world. So those were the ones I would think and say, okay, th these are my inspirations. Interestingly, now and a lot through maybe the last year of, of COVID or the last few, I'm beginning to be very powerfully inspired by the common man by India's middle class. Yeah. You know, their ability to, they will shut off their TV subscription for two years if they have a child in 11th and 12th standard. Mm. That kind of dedication to the family and to getting ahead. And hundreds of such stories in our own employees, you know, the people who will not see their, their baby for three months yeah. because they're doing COVID duty. What can you say about such things? And, and that comes, so there are heroes everywhere. Yes. And it is that middle class, this, you know, the, the farmer who, who sows the, the idiom that the man who plants the tree or the woman who plants the tree is not going to eat its fruit, but they still plant it and still water it. That concept is beginning to inspire me a lot. When we look at healthcare industry from the top and possibly specifically at Apollo hospitals also, uh, from my point of view, it is about uh, research, it is about advanced diagnostics, it is about world-class services, world-class infrastructure, world-class people, human capital, and so and so forth. On the other hand, there are other aspects of uh, healthcare industry and possibly the challenges of the past may not necessarily be the challenges of the future. And uh, possibly some new challenges on uh, mental health coming up in the time to come. So how do you see from a broader point of view? Uh, the new age healthcare challenges coming up in the time to come and how do we prepare ourselves for them? COVID has given the world an opportunity to rethink and reset. Number one, it brought healthcare center stage, which it required. Uh, number two, at Apollo, we clearly realized that, uh, you know, there was the epidemic of COVID or the pandemic of COVID which was made worse by the underlying epidemic of non-communicable disease. And NCDs, which is the cardiac problems, cancer, uh, nephrology and kidney related disorders, neurology, many of them, and diabetes, many of them, these systemic disorders are a result of lifestyle. Right. So what that means, that is at the core of the transformation. Yes, technology is definitely coming into healthcare, and during COVID, with 24-7, we, we brought doctors into the homes of patients when they needed it. Mm. Uh, so technology is enabling that. It's taking expertise into other hospitals. And we've been working on these aspects for the last 20 years. The interesting thing is that for the last 40 years, my father has been working on, and Apollo has subsequently been working on, the health checkup and preventive health care over 19 million health checks. Excellent. And we've now taken those and uh, applied this data and these health presentation patterns because the body gives early warning symptoms. We've created an algorithm to en encapsulate it into a health risk scoring. 
and with the hra rather than you know thinking that i need to treat or screen or take care of 1.4 billion people if we apply the health risk assessment we can narrow the scope and focus on the critical or the at risk patients absolutely so the concept of application of population health the focus you can derive by using technology in the application of population health and by focusing on prevention and therefore bring down the overall burden of disease is going to be one of the biggest paradigm shifts in healthcare yeah. which will be accelerated by the use of digital Excellent. we can think on this scale because we have technology Absolutely. we can think on the scale of monitoring patients everywhere because there are sensors there's iot of medical things and so it's an exciting era we can think of analytics because the the bytes or the processing capacity has really enhanced and therefore you can analyze a genome you can analyze the the ct the mr all these are images but Absolutely. it's all information about a patient Absolutely. do you know healthcare is the most information intensive industry yes. in the world Absolutely. and so when we start putting this together biology the bytes or the processing and the bandwidth and the connectivity these are transforming the way we'll be taking care from the hospital to the clinic from the clinic to the home and from the home to a 24 by 7 ubiquitous access to care you could be in the airport catching a flight when your sensor will beep and tell your doctor that this guy is going in for a heart attack tell him not to board that flight and the system and the crm will automatically tell your wife as well so that if you're not <laughs> listening to your doctor your wife will call you it's it's thing you know so much of these pathways it's for us to keep them human centric to appreciate the healing capacity of the world and the mind and the body and to channelize those along with technology so that we evolve this better healthcare system excellent so it's it's going to be an exciting, exciting. next yeah. decade and and i'm really looking forward to as a pre, you know attend going into it with the skill sets that we need and the awareness and the sensitivity that such a task demands but also with the determination that we're doing it because every single life you lay, you save every single person you keep healthier goes back and impacts that family it's those two children who became you know who lost their dad at an age when yeah. they shouldn't right. and that's what every story or every intervention is about it's about somebody's life and someone's happiness and that is the inspiration yeah you're reflecting a very strong sense of determination and a very higher sense of purpose so i'm sure this is going to happen in the time to come are we looking at uh, some sensors getting implanted into human bodies so let's say in next couple of decades i mean is that going to be a reality in the time to come oh 100% manish not even couple of decades oh, is that so you will see it in this decade it could be you know whether it's something in the brain it could be kidney and blood related so that we pick up the disorders but research and science is moving at an incredible pace yeah. so there will be some parallel paths and themes the analysis of the genome and the presentation of disease and therefore the ability to segment the vulnerable i think yeah. will be one ongoing theme the ability to take knowledge across the world and move into precision medicine more accurate diagnosis greater speed the combination of precision engineering so robotic surgery along with all these tools will be pushing one more dimension and then will come you know the sensors the continuous monitoring but at the base and the core of it will be heightened awareness uh, of governments and societies and individual human beings right of of the importance of health and that there are many paths towards solving this problem absolutely So Dr Reddy this possibly brings me to the last question of uh, uh, this particular aspect of our conversation are we also looking at unification of uh, health uh, data records for individuals so in a situation if one walks into a x hospital one is able to download the entire record entire history of the previous diagnostics or the treatment or the medical uh, prescriptions and so and so forth i believe that in many developed countries so is the case for last many years are we looking at that kind of situation also to happen in our country soon so manish it's almost like you you read my mind and you've been tracking what i'm doing or what i really you know believe in and i strongly believe in almost 12 years ago we started a company called health highway because i felt it was very important to create this continuum 
of data to enable a continuum of care. Right. If a patient sees a GP in a village and then he comes into a hospital and he sees an internal medicine, but he goes to a cardiologist as well. How are all these people talking? So that is one, you know, scenario. The second scenario is that because it's non-communicable disease and lifestyle, which is now the biggest 70% of all deaths in the world are because of NCDs now, yeah. the patient is now at the center of the health ecosystem and Happily for us, we're beginning to realize it's not the patient, it's the healthy individual Absolutely. who's at the center. You spoke about Aishman Bharat and while it has been a great initiative and also a great enabler of a sort, uh, how do you see uh, top quality healthcare services penetrating into deeper parts of our country? And I for the fact know that Apollo also has one of the endeavors in this direction. So it's a combination of things, uh, Manish, to begin with, I think the government has now uh, kind of put on the concept or the hat that universal health coverage is enabled by creating a financial access right. and not necessarily by trying to build all the hospitals. Yeah, absolutely. Parallelly, I think models like we have, so we created a system which was actually uh, inaugurated by the then Prime Minister uh, Manmohan Singh Ji when he said that uh, you know, this is very important for the country. So REACH, which is the Rural yeah. Empowerment and Access to Quality Healthcare, mm -hmm. is our uh, lower cost tier 3, tier 4 model. And we've also done in a government district headquarter, in partnership, we're running the hospital for the government. When we took over, their uh, daily outpatient footfalls were about 500 and odd. Uh, today, they cross 2,000 patients per day. It is a pleasure if we blur the lines between public and private and build collaborative models which think win-win because the private healthcare system has to charge, has to sustain. Uh, parallelly, the government healthcare system has to reach out and also sustain. But if we blur those lines and say whoever can do it best in the most effective manner mm -hmm. and reach out and we begin a focus on quality outcomes and healthy populations we will put on a different uh, lens in the way we view these partnership models. And I think it's beginning to happen. Absolutely. So, uh, and I will, I will push relentlessly. And it's not only in large hospital, it's in skilling of doctors because it's in skilling of nurses across the ecosystem. It's in thinking through the design of new models. So we ran 150 primary healthcare clinics in a state and showed a tremendous, you know, physical digital combination uh, we train those doctors, we put clinical decision support systems in front of them and they learned and they upgraded and public responded. They walked with their feet and I mean they voted with their feet and, and you know gave us more footfalls. We've done in places in Himachal which are inaccessible four or five months of the year, we do tele-emergency and we've saved lives. Uh, we do EICU. So the, the path and the op options to serve and innovate are quite amazing in healthcare. You know, when it comes to uh, us looking at uh, self-reliant India in the time to come, so we call it Atmanirbhar Bharat, I believe that in the healthcare sector, we've been kind of Atmanirbhar for uh, many years in the past. Do you see that happening in the healthcare sector also in the time to come that we possibly establish a very strong footprint of our healthcare industry in the time to come elsewhere out of our country as well? opportunity creation that we have to do for our growing middle class yeah. uh, and our youth, 17 million youth coming into the job market every year. We yeah. must tap them, we must channelize them. So there is no option for us but to, to strengthen the economy through manufacturing, right. uh, to focus on exports and then to do it strategically, which is what I think the PLI, the component yeah. manufacturing is all about. Coming to healthcare, why I believe healthcare and education are two very important aspects of India's overall, you know, path to, to leadership. And I, and I strongly believe that India is an idea whose time has come. Yeah. And uh, I'm using idea also as, uh, you know, an encapsulation of some themes. I don't want to see, India was many years ago a very rich country, but it was rich for 2% of the people. So this ability to carry the country with us and an inclusive. So I is for this inclusive. Um, D is actually digital and digital with the current path, which is already there, but enhancing it, growing it, using it, uh, blinking the dots mm. 
whether it's the teledensity or the Aadhaar card, linking all those and creating this strong digital environment. Uh, the E for me is ease of doing business, empowerment, ability for people to entrepreneurship, all those things coming together. And um, finally, the A is, is something that I believe is an abundance mindset. Because uh, many people in India have grown up in a scarcity mindset. Right. And from that scarcity mindset brings a certain, yeah. you know, selfishness or fighting. Mm. Um, you know, the Indian lobster story or the crab story yeah. will pull each other down. Mm. But if we enter this with an abundance mindset, that because digital and our intellectual capacity gives us this, we can conquer and create everything. Absolutely. And we can carry our country with us in this ab abundance mindset and innovate and be inclusive. So, so I believe India is um, a country or an idea whose time has come. The power of healthcare and education is that it is such a soft power for India. Hmm. So we can become the medical or the health value destination for the world. Hmm. Our pharmaceutical strength, which already, you know, our government and the Honorable Prime Minister, what a sense of pride that we are supplying vaccines to 160 countries. We do 60% of the world's vaccine. I mean, hats off to our, our pharma sector. And whatever little gaps of APIs, things we gave up, now being addressed so that we're strengthening that. That is self-reliant. That is Atmanirbhar. Yes. That is what I'm proud about. But also, besides medical value travel, and finally, you know, most significantly, the reputation of the Indian doctor across the world is amazing. If we can combine that with the power of this new digital delivery, so teleradiology, telepathology, tele-ICU, all these can bring this to India and then taking it one step further, use the data of the Indian ecosystem to evolve the AI enabled models faster than anyone else, build this made in India methodology of healthcare, which then radically brings down the cost of healthcare for the world. First, you apply it in developing countries, of course, so that they, you know, they follow this India model. But subsequently, this is a model that the world will uh, adopt and espouse. Absolutely. So I, I really dream of designing this environment in a manner which is, you know, proactive, focused on preventive, uses data, uses technology, and is still empathetic and holistic. So uh, it's it's work in progress. <laughs> Uh, is there a higher purpose which uh, lets you do what you do? You touched upon some of these aspects in our conversation. So for me, Apollo is my higher purpose. Okay. I, f I feel the work we do here is deeply meaningful. Uh, that ability to save lives, to impact the transformation of healthcare, to be part of giving people health and happiness. I, I, I believe that's very important. My purpose really is um, to help create a better world uh, through what the work we do at Apollo. Thank you so much. We at Panasonic also, the kind of vision statement which defines us today is uh, to create a better life for people and a better world for societies. So let's continue to do our bit uh, in this way ahead. I'm extremely thankful to you for the conversation and I'm sure this is going to create a lot of insights and inspiration for mm -hmm. all the viewers. Extremely thankful to you once again, Dr. Vedi. Thanks Thank you, Manish. It's been a pleasure talking to you. All the best and namaste. Thank you so much.